Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op here, and today I want to talk about the no filter, the natural aquarium that uh, has been on and off popularity for the last 20 years. I've played with it a bunch, and I'm there's been a, a surge of it right now, and I, I think I think I know why. And I want to talk about it so that uh, I can stop talking about it, basically. I get asked about it all the time. And I've been trying to think of a good analogy to help everybody understand this concept and why I understand it, but I don't practice it. So, you know, the first thing, know that I do love nature, enjoy nature daily. It's a slogan of my company. And it's been that way since inception. I routinely try to get out and look at a puddle of water, look at the mosquitoes, look at the frogs and the tadpoles and, and everything that's going on, right? And so I go to Peru and I look at fish in their native habitats and I do all that and I love it. And yet I don't keep my tanks without filters and all natural, no heaters and all of that. I do some of these elements and I have done all of these elements in the past, but I think what's going on is it's beneficial to create sensational headlines and that's it gets worse every day you know it's this one simple trick will make you a billion dollars and save your family from whatever you see it in all the headlines and it's made its way to youtube and i think there is something alluring about going back to nature and uh i like to do it but i don't do it with my aquariums and the best analogy i think i can come up with is we create ecosystems, little homes for our fish, and I think going kind of all natural, no filtration, no heater, maybe not even a light, and some of them say don't even feed your fish, right? That's more like living off the grid. You know, maybe you build a home, you live off grid. It's not that it can't be done, and it's not that it wasn't done in the past, and not that people aren't doing it today, but I would counter it with I'm not doing that either, even though I can. I like to use technology. And so what I like to think about is thinking about the people that have been in the hobby a long time. If we truly didn't need filtration or air or heaters or lights or food or additives or any of this stuff, the greats in the hobby would have never embraced it, right? So we'll take someone like Dean. You know, I'm not going to say he's one of the greats in the hobby. He's a great dude, great hobbyist, friend of mine. When I was a fry, my parents used to keep me literally on a leash. But he's been keeping fish for nearly 50 years at this point. And he, like me, has done it all. Every time there's been a new technology come out, we've tried it. Every, you know, and he's, he's from a point where, kind of where I started. I started with just a humble sponge filter. Then I tried cancer filters and hang on backs and different hang on backs and different canisters and different heaters and different lights and all of this stuff. And we find favorites. But what I find interesting is our favorites are not nothing, right? And so what I mean by that is we still use sponge filters. We still use a cancer filter when we need to. These technological upgrades in the hobby are beneficial. It's not that you can't do it. And so when it comes to living off the grid, can I live off the grid? Could I live without internet? Could I live without power? Could I live without running water? These are things that can be done. But would we choose to do it for ourselves? Most of us watching this right now, you would not choose that. I have all this energy using to make this video. I live on the grid. Now, I think our ecosystems, the aquariums we keep are the same way. Our goal is to do best by our fish. It's very easy to get confused I think a lot of people take this trajectory, and this is how I'm going to explain it. You're new to the hobby, you buy some stuff, you keep some fish, you kill some fish, you try to save some fish, you kill some fish, you keep some fish, all of that happens. Meanwhile, you're being fed sales pitches. You should buy this, you should buy that, this is the next best thing. Oh, you would have saved that fish had you done this. And I think the industry has done a very bad job over the last 20 years that I've been in it at truly educating. And what I mean by that is there are companies that are much bigger than, than I am. Where's Tetra? Where's Fluval? Where's Eheim? Where's the 20 other companies making YouTube videos? Fluval, some credit, you do make some. Uh, making YouTube videos, making blog articles, uh, being at shows and actually educating, not just trying to sell products, right? And so while I make videos that are sensational myself sometimes, like I hate cancer filters, and I do pretty much hate them because you can do, I, for my way I keep fish, a lot easier with a sponge filter or a hang on back, right? But I think what has happened is there's been such a lack 
of education from the companies producing products that is led towards a revolt against that, right? So because you never got a manual with your dishwasher or your freezer or your fridge, and eventually it kind of breaks and it's not working very well, you start deciding, well, I'm not going to use those. I'm going to go off the grid, right? I'm going to go back to basics. I'm going to build a, a cellar and keep everything. But instead, I think we just need education. And that's what I've tried to do with my company. Every product we build, we try to make educational articles and videos and take you along for the process and help you understand why you might want to supplement light for your planted aquarium. Can I grow it with sunlight? Yes, 100%. All the plants we buy before we sell them to you were grown with sunlight and supplemental light. A lot of people don't know that. When you go to a greenhouse, a lot of times in the winter, they're actually using lights to grow the plants because they can't get enough sunlight. Side point. I do think it's alluring to have the off-the-grid type of tank or home. I watch alone or other series where it's like, wow, that's super cool. It'd be hard to live off the land. That's interesting. And I think there is something to that. Keeping a tank at some point in your career where you're not using any of the technology is a good thing because from that moment, you then can appreciate the technology that I now apply to my aquarium. Is this making it better? I think it is. I, I run very low technology. I basically run lights and I run sponge filters. So I like air and I like some mechanical filtration, some biological filtration and light. That's pretty much it. I feed my fish. I do think it's proper to feed them. And I keep moderate stockings, but I've done some heavy stockings. And I think we use some dechlorinator because we have chlorine in our water, right? Not everyone in the world is going to have that problem, but we do in America. And I think it's, the encouragement should be definitely learn from the ancestors. Try to keep an aquarium with no equipment. So then you'll appreciate, wow, it was super nice to be able to use a gravel vac. It was super nice to be able to use a sponge filter. And just because fish can survive without these things doesn't mean they prefer to. I can survive living in a tent, but I prefer not to, right? And so just like I might prefer it to be a stable temperature, your fish prefer that mostly as well. They might prefer to have more oxygen. Yes, I have filmed in Peru where fish are in closed off waterways and there's much lower oxygen and the fish, some are struggling, some are doing okay, some are dying, some have adapted to it. But given a preference, they would choose to have as much clean oxygen as they could get, right? And so when it comes to the consumerism of aquariums, there are a lot of chain stores and, and, and bad actors on the internet and marketing and, and that kind of stuff that will, their end goal is purely consume more. Buy another filter, your filter's not good enough. Buy another product, your product's not good enough. Feed more food, do this, do that. All of these things. But that has led people away from the fact that something like a basic air pump with an air stone is incredible value to your hobby. A $20 investment, and that's not even including a sponge filter or anything, like just an air stone is an incredible piece of technology that has been around for many, 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 many years and is widely adopted, right? It was only when we started adding canister filters and hang on back filters that were like, oh, you don't have to have an air pump. You could use this other more expensive thing to buy from this company. And do they work? Yes, but in my testing, which I have videos, they work not as efficiently as that. Now, if you have a preference and you're like, I love to stare at my hang on back, I get it, that's fine. But when it comes to, will fish do better with no technology, no filter, none of that, versus someone with the same skill level using the right tools they feel will help, I think every time that wins. Now, if it was a seasoned uh, aquarist that has been in the hobby for five years, and they really know what fish look like and disease look like and how much to eat and all of that with no filter, no heater, none of that versus someone who's been in the hobby for three months and has everything you could buy from a local chain store. Of course, the five year experience is going to win. That's the thing. Experience is always going to trump the equipment, right? You know, I can, I can give the worst tennis racket to a professional to play me and they'll beat me every time. Even if I've got the world's best tennis racket, the equipment enhances the person doing the hobby. And so I think that's important. You know, one, it's easier to teach a no filter aquarium because you just say do nothing. 
Don't feed the fish. Don't heat them. Don't light them. Don't aerate them. Don't filter them. Just put plants and water and maybe some soil in there and let it do its murky thing. Nature will do it. It's kind of like being in my garden. If I'm a plant person, you can tell someone, just put the plant in the dirt. It'll work. It'll get rained on. It'll probably grow. But if you're really trying to make a beautiful yard, you start using some things like, well, I need these trimmers. I want to trim it. Oh, I want to set up a sprinkler. Oh, I want to fertilize at this time of year. And that's what I think. I think we're doing a disservice to the hobby with showing them a beautiful garden that takes all of this maintenance and these tools and these tricks and this knowledge and saying, no, 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 you could just buy one plant from Home Depot, throw it in the ground, and you'll have that garden. That's the no-filter aquarium. And it gets a lot of views because everyone goes, wouldn't it be nice if I could have something amazing and do no work, cost no money, and I have all that stuff sitting around? Of course, everyone wants to watch that video. Everyone wants to learn about that. But the reality is the fish's lives and your hobby will be better if you embrace the technology that you understand, that you can afford, and brings benefit to your hobby. If you don't need a CO2 regulator, great, you don't need one. If you don't need a saltwater skimmer, great, you don't need one. If you don't need a big expensive cannabis filter, great, right? But if you do need one, you've got a big African cichlid tank and it makes your, you service that filter once a month and that makes your hobby great, that's good, right? And I think that's what we gotta focus on is knowledge is power, learn about these things, learn why was an underground filter popular? Why was a, a corner filter popular? Why is a hang on back filter popular? Why is a sponge filter popular? Why is a power head uh, popular? Why is overhead filtration popular in the rest of the world but not in America? Why is a canister filter popular here? Why is this? And by learning what is actually different about them and how they might change the way you use them, you can learn a whole lot. Just like I have a riding lawnmower, I have a push lawnmower, both of them are electric or gas, whereas I could get one that's just like this, or I could do it with scissors. But I've chosen at what level I want to participate in that hobby. And, you know, there, there'll be people that are like, you would never need a zero turn mower. And there's people like, oh, I have a, you know, I have a quarter acre and I have five zero turn mowers, right? There's the whole gamut, but I would say doing nothing because I am reclaiming one of mine and turning into a meadow, but it still needs some maintenance. So even though I love nature, nature can be enhanced with some of the technologies we've developed over the last 50 years. And I think it's beneficial to us to embrace some of those. At the very least, if you want to do a no filter type tank as natural as possible, I strongly recommend at least an airstone. At least don't deprive the fish of oxygen. Even in a planet tank, I know plants make oxygen, but at night they consume oxygen. So at least an air stone. You can take it to any level you want. I'm not here to tell you what you should do in your hobby. I'm purely trying to lay it out in what I think being in the hobby for 20 years, where I've been from running absolutely nothing. I've run 30 gallon tanks with absolutely not even an air stone and anything. And I've tried what happens when I add this? What happens when I do this? And I've seen a lot of the different benefits. I've done a lot of testing. I've bought a lot of things. I've tested products. And so I know what I like. I like simple tanks. They run a sponge filter, an air, and a light. That's what I like. I don't run heaters. I heat the whole room when I need to. But even that, I'm not doing as much anymore. And maybe you could say that the people toting that know more than I do. And maybe they do. I, I don't claim to know it all. But I, I do know from watching others around me that have been in the hobby a long time the things that are universal are pretty much air and some type of filtration makes it easier. It's not that you can't run it without filtration, but from enjoying the hobby, people enjoy feeding fish. They enjoy a clean tank. They enjoy things looking good and they like it to be cheap. So you see where you fit in. I fit in on the, the lower end towards nature spectrum, but utilizing the least amount of technology that makes my hobby enjoyable Maybe you'll be on that high-tech side. Salt water is full of them. I love the technology more than they love fish. I see that all the time. And it is a, it's is—it's got its own allure to it. Um, but I wanted to kind of lay that out so that hopefully uh, everybody could rally around, like, where am I fitting in here? And not knowing that it's high-tech or non-filtered aquarium, there is the silent majority of the hobby that's somewhere in there. I bought a cancer filter. I hate it, but I'm going to use it for the next 10 years because I already own it. I always say that in my videos, if you own it, use it. Nothing out there uh, is 
going to change your hobby that much unless you own nothing. If you own nothing, an air pump makes a huge difference, right? From there, you could do some type of filtration, whether it's under gravel, sponge filter, something else. And uh, yeah, that's what I want to leave you guys with. Find out what's going to work for you. Watch all those videos. Support all those YouTubers. That's fine uh, and good. And take what you can. Even with, when I don't agree with stuff, I learn stuff. And that's the important thing. Learn for what will make your hobby better. So, all right. We'll see you in the next video. And uh, I'm off to go play in my garden. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. To watch another one just like this, click here.